Today I'm going to give you actionable and practical tools to take control over your health and fitness. Welcome back to the Transform with MG podcast. I'm your host Martina Good. So before we dig into the juicy part and explaining the exact framework, exact steps you need to follow in order to achieve any goal, whether that's fat loss, muscle gain, overall fitness, changing your body composition or improving your habits, this framework is going to be for you and it if you stick by it and follow the steps I'm about to tell you, then you will get to your ultimate goal. Before we do that, I want to go down the memory lane and take you back to autumn 2017. So that was just as I transitioned from being a schoolgirl into an adult essentially. I moved away from home, I moved to Galway, that's where I was starting university and I was just delighted to have freedom, not having my parents nag me about stuff, not having to explain my everyday life to them and not having to wear a school uniform five out of the seven days of the week. So naturally with more freedom came more socializing. I started to spend time with new people, interact with like vast amount of people obviously as you do in college but it was also a time that I started to look more into or take interest I suppose into how I look and I felt more pressure to actually look a certain way perhaps in order to be more liked and fit in and there definitely was that beauty standard going around so because there was a lot more nights out and there was a lot more events happening and you know we no longer were all essentially little minions wearing a school uniform there was that pressure and I started to spend more time on social media as well and alongside having more freedom I had more freedom when it came to the types of foods that I ate I ate out a lot more there was the nights out which involved alcohol and involved 2am and McDonald's gotta love a chicken nuggets or pizza Napoli if you're from Galway it's the best but I mean it kind of a few months of that and it started to take a toll on my body and I began to feel more uncomfortable Uh, clothes weren't fitting me as well my confidence was dipping and so was my energy and I thought okay it is time for a change and this is when I decided to join the the gym and my my pure purpose and goal to be small and skinny and if I'm being totally honest with you I thought that looking a certain way is going to give me more recognition, it's going to help me fit in, it's going to help me get more attention and I suppose, I don't know, fit in with the like popular kids. So 18 year old Martina was absolutely freaking clueless when it came to anything to do with the gym or improving my body composition, my health. So I would spend hours watching YouTube videos of my favorite influencers or reading blog posts. You know, at that time, TikTok didn't exist. You couldn't just like go into the app and watch 30 second reels. I actually had to go and like do my bit of research. But after watching YouTube, reading different blog posts, I would go into the gym, I would go into the kitchen and I would try to replicate what my favorite influencer was doing at the time. So because I wanted a physique she had I thought if I eat and train like that person I am going to look like them so off I went you know trying different routines trying different diets and I think I've tried every possible diet that there is because I used to jump from diet to diet any trend there was I was right on that bandwagon keto intermittent fasting low carb low fat what not I tried it drinking apple cider vinegar for breakfast tick drinking celery juice instead of having a meal, tick. It was definitely a period of time where I was like, okay, I just got to try whatever I can because I wanted to see results fast. As you can imagine, I couldn't really stay consistent with it for longer than a couple of weeks and I would feel so frustrated and I would blame myself for the lack of discipline, motivation, willpower. But despite feeling tired, irritated, 
moody and miserable I just kept going because I was so desperate to make that change so now I was working out every day sometimes twice per day eating little to nothing having zero energy and being moody as hell and you know what I was feeling way worse than before I even started this transformation so something had to change and it has taken me years to work on my mindset, to educate myself on proper nutrition and training, that I finally started to view my body as a temple. A home that I want to take care of and keep in the best possible condition for as long as I can. Instead of striving to be small and skinny, I strived to be strong and healthy. Instead of working out seven days a week doing cardio exercises, which I hated, I followed a structured plan and strived to be strong and fit. Instead of depriving myself, I started to fuel my body with the foods that I absolutely love and that gave me a lot of energy. By doing that, I actually started to enjoy the process and I no longer found improving my health and fitness as a chore, but as an enjoyable journey. And this is what brings me to where I am now, to doing what I do, and that is helping women just like you and me to transform their health, body and mindset in a holistic sustainable way through improving habits and routines and the reason why I actually set up Transform with MG which is my online coaching platform helping hundreds of women because of my why because of my journey I want to help women regain that confidence regain that energy and more so just feel freaking great in themselves and prevent the mistakes that I've made, you know, in the past as an 18 year old Martina back in 2017. And I know this might sound like maybe a bit of a rep repetition for some of you if you've listened to my first and second episodes where I did share like my journey and what brought me here, but I thought it was just really important for the purpose of this episode because the framework that I am about to explain to you the tools that you need to take control of your health and fitness is what helped me to finally achieve the body that I'm proud of and it's something that I use with every single client to help them feel the exactly same and achieve exactly the body the health and the mindset that they desire so what is the transform with mg five-step framework we can view it as a pyramid and the best analogy that i can use is a food pyramid if you think of the food pyramid which a lot of us are very familiar with at the bottom of the pyramid you have the things that you should include in a large quantities and that you should prioritize the most. As you move upward on the pyramid, the pyramid obviously gets smaller and the things that are at the top is things that should only be looked at in moderation, sporadically, they're the least important. So I want you to look at the Transform with MG five-step framework as a pyramid that goes from the most important, which is at the bottom, to the least important at the top. And it is split into five sections. So section one is at the bottom, which is the most important, and that is your mindset. Then we have sleep and stress, then we have food, then the fourth pillar is our exercise and lastly is our supplements. So it goes from mindset to supplements in the order of most important to least important. So let's just break them down so you know exactly how you should tackle each step. And this is the exact order that you need to tackle each steps in order to regain that control over your health and fitness. So when we're talking about mindset, the change begins in your head first. Your mindset has to shift before you even begin your health and fitness journey. And there are four main principles of mindset that I am going to tell you about. And I want you to keep those four key principles at the back of your head at all times. They form the base of your journey without having them in the right place no matter what results you're going to achieve you're not going to feel fulfilled just like I didn't back in the day when I first started that gym and I was like starving myself and I was overtraining 
each week I was actually seeing results and by results I mean I was getting smaller and smaller and smaller but I couldn't even appreciate it. I couldn't even see that my body was changing week on week because internally I still felt huge and I was like riddled with insecurities. It wasn't giving me any confidence. It wasn't increasing my happiness whatsoever until you work on your mindset and until you apply these four principles chances are whatever results you achieve they're not going to be meaningful to you so the first core principle of the mindset pillar is that shape and size doesn't define you as a person you might have heard or you might have even said it yourself i'd be happy when x i'd be happy when i lose my tummy pouch i'd be happy when i have toned arms i'd be happy when i am size 8 i'd be happy when insert a desired outcome here. We are all led to believe that we can only achieve happiness if we look a certain way, if we're a certain size, if we're a certain number on the scales, or if we buy a certain clothes tag in the shop. Truth is, numbers don't define your value as a person. How you look is the least interesting thing about you. You might be thinking, all right, Martina, if this is true, then why is there so many people claiming that losing weight actually made them the happiest person ever? And you know what? They're not wrong. They're not wrong, but it's not the drop in weight per se that led them to feeling more fulfilled and happy, but it's the lifestyle change that they made. Therefore, your happiness doesn't come from a size, shape, or a number. It comes from the changes that you do to your diet, to your exercise, to your sleep, and again, to your mindset. So it's not a number, it's all about habits. The reason why other people might be claiming, or even you in the past, you felt like, oh, when I was smaller, I was happier. No, it's not that you were smaller and you were happier. It's because you had better habits and you were also constantly pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, trying new things that you haven't before and building that bucket of proof that you're actually like capable of achieving things that you didn't think you can achieve so that's just the first thing to keep in mind it doesn't come from a size shape or a number it comes from the habits the changes and habits that you make the second core principle of mindset is all or nothing mentality what is all or nothing mentality essentially the best way i can explain it is the fine line between doing something perfectly or not doing anything at all let me give you an example say that you set yourself a weekly goal that after work you're going to go out for one hour walk every single evening to get your step count goal you know that exercise is important so you're going to begin by walking one of the days it's a thursday you've been so good monday to thursday getting outside for one hour it's a thursday for whatever reason you have to stay late at work maybe you have to finish a project you won't be able to get your walk in so instead you go home and instead of doing anything you decide to just collapse on the sofa and watch netflix for the night and because you feel like a failure because you couldn't keep up with your habit of walking every day you tell yourself screw it what is the point continuing for the rest of the week i'm just going to begin on monday and i'm going to be more disciplined i'm going to be more motivated or maybe this time is different and you apply imperfect action the concept of imperfect action which is totally opposite of the all or nothing mentality yes uh, something got in your way that you weren't able to complete your daily goal of going for one hour walk but instead you go home and you put on a 20 minute youtube video and you do a follow along full body body weight workout or even something more subtle which like yoga you're still doing something and then comes Friday and you just pick up the habit again. The thing is, action, even if it's imperfect, is still better than no action at all. And I know perhaps doing the small little tribal things that are like leading you closer to your goal but aren't actually producing any substantial results right there seem like you know what's the point but it's those little actions and habits that you take daily that compound and get you to your ultimate end goal the third core principle of mindset is to know your why so if you're listening to this 
you probably have an account on Instagram, more than likely on TikTok as well, or some social media account. I want you to ask yourself, has there ever been a time where you were scrolling Instagram or TikTok and comparing your everyday body to an image or a video that you see on your screen? I know I have plenty of times and you know how it made me feel? Absolutely shit. Like it has not given me hashtag inspo. It made me more insecure about my body. Social media presents an idealistic version of reality. It often paints a picture of how an ideal body should look like, which puts pressure on us to undergo change in order to fit into that confined box. One of my favorite quotes is comparison is the thief of joy. We spend hours scrolling social media comparing ourselves to others, comparing ourselves to somebody else's highlight reel, a photo or a video shot under the perfect lighting with the perfect camera lenses and very likely highly edited. And this is why the reason for your change, your why, knowing why you're doing this, why you want to change has to be individualized to you. It is your journey. Stop trying so hard to look like somebody else. The mistake that I did when I first started out, I didn't have a clue watching my favorite influencers on YouTube. I wanted their body and I tried to replicate what they were doing. But the thing is, body types are trends. They're forever changing. And if you're following a trend, you're never going to reach the end goal and literally drive yourself insane. And the fourth principle of mindset is to think long-term. Okay, who remembers the story tale of the turtle and the hare? So essentially, a little recap. The essence of the story is that the turtle and the hare go against each other in a race. The hare being so confident that obviously he is the fastest person and he's naturally going to win the race, he decides to take a little nap mid-race. Whereas the turtle, while he was moving at an extremely slow pace, he hasn't stopped, he kept moving and ultimately he was the one that won the race. Moral of the story is that you're going to be more successful doing things slowly and steadily than acting quickly and carelessly. When it comes to improving your health and fitness, be the turtle. Yes, things might take longer than you wish, but at least you're making the changes in a sustainable way and you're more than likely to maintain your results than if you were to look for a quick fix or a fast solution. Now that we have the first pillar of the framework covered, we can move on to the second pillar, which is sleep and stress. Question is, why am I talking about sleep and stress before I go into food and exercise? Surely, they are important for changing body composition and for improving our health. And yes, you're correct. But the thing is, sleep and stress play a direct impact on how and how much we eat and also how and how much we exercise. And this is why they need to be addressed first. So let's break them down and talk about it one by one. Starting off with sleep. Sleep is the key component of health. It plays a role in regulating all of our hormones. Hormones are chemical messengers that indicate to the body on how to function properly, essentially. If you view, if you think of yourself as a TV and hormones as a remote control, they control every single thing. And oh, even a slight change in hormones, something being dysregulated slightly can have like a massive impact on how you feel. So it's not something to be taken lightly. And when you sleep, those hormones recharge. It's like plugging your phone into the charger and allowing it to build its battery back up. That's what you can view sleep as and what it does to your hormones. So it's absolutely crucial. When it comes to food, Sleep regulates our hunger and satiety hormones, ghrelin and leptin. So when we lack sleep, they are completely out of whack, which means that we're more likely to overeat. There was actually a study done um, on participants who slept five hours or less, and the results were that those participants ended up overeating by 500 calories. 
which is huge, you know? Like if your goal is to lose weight or even maintain a healthy weight, eating, overeating every single day by 500 calories can quickly like shift your weight upwards. So that's quantity of food, but also sleep shifts how we view food. If we don't get enough sleep, suddenly foods becomes more appealing and we want to pick up things that are high sugar, high fat, that gives us like a quick dopamine release. And another thing is that we're lacking energy. So we're looking for chocolate or sweets to like boost that energy and maybe like yes short term it works but then you're gonna experience just sudden energy crashes that's food and energy but then we also have things like concentration and focus if you're a high achiever and you know you want to produce like remarkable outcomes from whatever it is it might be like your career then you need to be sharp and focused if you're not getting enough sleep then that just isn't going to be there and you're gonna find it a lot harder to remember things, to focus on things, to produce good work. So as you can tell, sleep plays a major role on food, on the ability to like stay consistent with exercise and also with your memory, with your focus and concentration. So now I want to give you another framework, which is the three to one framework, or more so 10 three to one. Basically, 10 hours before you go to bed, cut out caffeine. Any caffeine that includes coffee, that includes tea, that includes Coke Zero, they all have caffeine in it. 10 hours because caffeine has a half-life. So chances are if you're drinking coffee, half of that caffeine intake is still going to be in your system by the time you're going to bed. Three hours before, stop having any food. If you're eating too close to bedtime, your body is digesting that food and you're gonna have difficulty falling asleep or the quality of your sleep is just gonna be rubbish. Two hours before bed, stop drinking any fluids so that you don't feel the need to wake up during the night to go to the bathroom and one hour before bed, no screen times. So you want to avoid as much blue light, which is the light projected from the screens like your laptops, your phones, TV, uh, because blue light suppresses melatonin. Melatonin is the like hormone chemical in our body that indicates to us that it's time to go to sleep. It produces that like sleepiness feeling. So blue light, melatonin, interfere, and then we're wide awake. So 10, 3, 2, 1 to improve your sleep. Second part of the second pillar is our stress levels. And look, we're all stressed at times, whether that's relationship problems, whether that's friendship drama, money issues, annoying and demanding bosses stress is there all the time and nowadays we live in like hustle and grind culture it's all about more 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 and we're not giving our body a break we're not giving our nervous system a break and stress has look when it's acute when it's short term it's not an issue stress produces a hormone called cortisol which is actually really crucial for things like fighting of bacteria and inflammation and getting us out of bed. So in small doses, it's needed. But when it's like with the accumulation of stress, it's when it becomes chronic and that's when it starts to have negative downsides on food, on exercise, on our physical mental health and just our fitness progress in general. So Managing stress is absolutely crucial. Like one example on how it affects you taking control of your health and fitness is that when you're in high levels of stress, it will affect your appetite. For some people, it will decrease their appetite and they're not going to be eating as much as they should be under eating. And then that under eating creates even more stress. And on the flip side, it can also lead to increased levels of appetite or thing or a thing called emotional eating when you're using food to numb negative emotions. Three of my favorite ways that you can manage your stress is a journaling 
and that can be as big or as small as you want. You know, you can have a certain protocol that you can follow in journaling, but even starting as small as writing down three things that you're grateful for every single morning is going to uplift your mood, is going to help you identify more positive stuff in your everyday life and as a result you're going to feel less stress then also if you want to like advance that you can also write down three things three great things that happened that day so that's journaling slash gratitude journaling then we have meditation slash yoga and this method allows you to get out of your head and into your body if you're somebody that overthinks a lot like myself Honestly, sometimes I'm just in my head. I'm in like the Lulu, 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 the Lulu world. I'm literally delusional <laughs> because I'm just in my own head and I make up my own scenarios. Meditation and yoga allow you to just get out of your head into your body. And the third one is moments of mindfulness. And that can be super simple as just being present in the task that you're doing. If you're drinking your coffee, just sitting there enjoying the flavors of it, the smell of it, like you know the texture if you're having a meal making a breakfast being really present and making that breakfast if you're spending time with like friends and family you know really engaging in that conversation and just that conversation rather than scrolling your phone and trying to listen to somebody that those moments of being present and mindful just help you feel more grounded in yourself so that's sleep and stress now we can move on to the third pillar which is food. When we look at food, it can be viewed through two lenses. One of them being food quantity, which is the amount of food that we eat, and then food quality, which is the types of foods that we eat. When it comes to food quantity, we can look at energy balance. An energy balance, an analogy I like to use for that is a seesaw. When calories in, the food that you consume, balances to the calories that you expend through like exercise and movement if the seesaw is balanced that means that you're going to maintain your weight when you start to eat more than you're burning then you're going to start to gain weight and on the flip side if you start to cons like exercise more and burn more calories than you're consuming true food then you're going to lose weight this is the law of thermodynamics and this is why all freaking diets work because no matter what diet you go on, if you create a calorie deficit, which is eating less than you're burning, you are going to lose weight. So whatever method of dieting you, dieting you decide to go by, then you're going to lose weight, provided that you're eating less calories than you're burning. So that's quantity of food. And quantity of food is important in weight management. However, can you eat McDonald's every single day and lose weight? Yes, the answer is yes. Provided that you consume less calories than you're burning overall, you can eat McDonald's every single day. But is it really only about weight loss? Like, do you really only care about losing the weight or do you want to have more energy? Do you want to have better mood? Do you want to improve your health? Like eating deep fried junk food every single day isn't really going to give you optimal health and fitness levels like you're not going to have the motivation and the energy to be able to like perform more in your workouts or even everyday tasks so food quality is also super important and when i'm talking about quality of food i mean like minimally processed foods foods that contain a lot of nutrients and to break down the concept of good or bad foods there is no such thing as good and bad foods per se because too much of anything even if it's healthy can be harmful so the danger is in the dose but there's definitely better foods than others from a nutrition standpoint and i am all for food freedom. I was somebody that suffered from disordered eating and used to cut out everything that I labeled to be bad. But I think food freedom can has gone like a bit too far to the extent where there's people claiming that you can literally eat whatever you want and 
it's not going to impact like your weight and your health but like it absolutely will so this isn't like fear-mongering but it's more so like you just need to get more educated that yes there's going to be foods like whole minimally processed foods like foods that they look like they came from their natural source that are going to give you more minerals and vitamins to like live more optimally and have more optimal health but when it comes to food quality I think moderation is key and I think balance is key and what I love is the 80-20 rule which means that 80% of your diet should consist of like lean protein, veg and fruit and complex carbs and then the 20% foods that feed your soul you know the ice cream, the chocolate, the cake because food isn't only there to keep us alive it's there as part of like social connections and enjoyment so so I definitely think there's room for that and 80-20 rule is amazing for it because if your 80% of your diet whether that's on a daily basis weekly basis consists of that like whole foods nutrient dense foods then there's no reason why you can't include like a snack or two that also brings me on to creating a balanced meal a balanced meal should consist of protein carbs fats and then your nutrients like veg and fruit when putting together a meal you want to have a combination of those four components and you should aim to have at least of three balanced meals a day breakfast lunch and dinner if you have breakfast lunch and dinner and each of those meals consists of lean protein some complex carbs veggies fruits and some healthy fats then you're gonna be freaking smashing it after mindset we had sleep and stress then we had food and now we're on to the fourth pillar of the pyramid which is exercise. Exercise can be broken down into eat and neat. Eat is exercise activity thermogenesis and neat is non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> A lot of sciencey words but essentially what that means eat refers to planned activity so it's things like your gym workout like your run and uh, like any sport that you're playing and non-exercise um, activity thermogenesis refers to your own planned activities such as cleaning the house bringing in the shopping from the car going grocery shopping anything that it like any movement that you're doing that you don't necessarily like plan to do and I would put steps into need although there's some people that claim well sometimes you plan to go for the walk so it shouldn't be accounted for like the eat part of exercise wherever you want to put it look I count steps as just like your general movement of moving around but exercise you have the physical planned activities and the um, non-planned activities. Exercise has a shitload of benefits and when I first started to get into fitness, into the gym, I purely viewed it as a way of losing weight. Like honestly that was just my main focus. Like I didn't care about any other benefits that the exercise or eating healthy brought me. If it helped me lose weight then I would do it. But essentially there's so much more benefits to exercise, to strength training to walking than just looking a certain way and what got me into lifting weights was to change my body composition what keeps me going eight years down the line goes far beyond body composition so taking for example strength training which it go, falls onto under the category of eat the benefits are that you're building strong muscles and joints you're also helping maintain the muscles that you have which naturally we lose as we grow older and that's not to like oh like you know I want to look like I have muscles no it's like supporting you when you're 70 years old and you want to climb freely up the stairs or carrying the shopping into your house it also increases insulin sensitivity that means that you can utilize the food a lot better rather than storing it as body fat. It improves mood, it improves cognition, it improves your sleep, tons, tons of benefits. And on the flip side, NEAT also has very similar benefits outside of like helping in building muscle. This is why I feel like two should be combined, but when it comes to NEAT, it actually helps with muscle recovery because it's low impact and doesn't take out 
as much it's not as intense as any strength training or sports training. It can help to relieve stress and improve mental health. It improves cardiovascular health. It helps control blood sugar, reduces risk of chronic disease, lowers the level of inflammation in the body, and it's an easier alternative if you're coming back from injury as well. So both of eat and need have benefits. Now, how do you actually build a sustainable routine? How do you even get into exercise in the first place? You might be thinking, okay, I get it. I understand there are benefits. I know I should be doing it, but I'm just tired. I just don't have motivation. I just don't know where to start. So pick something that you enjoy, first of all. Do an activity that you think you might like and try various things. You know, there's lifting weights, there's Pilates, there's yoga, there's running, there's climbing. There's so much out there for you. And I believe that if there's a will, there's a way. Just try something. Don't give up the first time. And also just stick with it, okay? At the start, it's going to feel hard. No matter what you do, if you're not used to doing anything at all, when you're only starting, your body is going to be faced with resistance. So give yourself at least three months, 90 days. And if after the 90 days you think this isn't for me, try something else. But do something that you enjoy. Two, start small. Don't, if you, for example, I'm just going to use the gym because I'm so familiar with it. Don't jump from zero to a hundred. Like don't go from not going to the gym to going six times per week because you're going to overwhelm yourself and you probably are going to be really sore and you might potentially even cause yourself an injury. Start off with two full body sessions. Start off with going with the small weights, the dumbbells and building up your strength and confidence that way. When it comes to gym anxiety, for example, a lot of people stay away from the gym because it seems like a scary place. Well, this is going to be uh, groundbreaking news, but your confidence will increase the more you show up, the more you do the things that you don't want to. I picked up running recently. I hated it. And I think the reason I hated it is because I was shit at it. I couldn't run for longer than a kilometer before having to stop and like I was just out of breath. But I realized that I just need to do hard things. And doing hard things was things that I'm uncomfortable. Now I'm running twice per week. You know, I'm still not exactly loving it, but I can see myself getting better and I know if I'm gonna stick to it, then it's going to improve. But I started small. I didn't just put on my running shoes and was like, okay, I'm gonna go and run half marathon. No, I went and ran 2K, then I ran 3K. Then I was like running for longer times. Starting small is how you're actually gonna build up that consistency. Third thing is you need to schedule it in, in your week. I use Google Calendar, which is free if you have a Gmail account and it's free to create a Gmail account if you don't. And I schedule in my workouts into my calendar on a Sunday. I treat it as an appointment. An appointment with myself is the most important appointment that I can make and when it's in my google calendar I get reminders every single day that I have that session coming up it's scheduled at a specific time so I'm not making excuses I look at my week in like a bird's eye view and I already plan when I have the time yes I can stay flexible I, again applying the imperfect action as opposed to the all or nothing mentality but if it's there the chances of me getting it done are so much higher than if I don't plan it and just hope that like, oh, it's a Wednesday, maybe I'm gonna go and train. It's just not gonna get done. Fourth thing is to prep the night before. So I feel like a successful day starts the night before and if you know you have a workout plan the following day, put your workout clothes out, pack your gym bag, load it in the car if you're driving and just be as ready as you can. When you come home, don't get into your dressing counter or your PJs or your comfies. Get into that gym gear and just leave without thinking. Prep the night before. And the fifth is to find an accountability partner. This could be a friend, this could be a coach. For me, I find that when I work with a coach, it's the best because Obviously, I'm investing. When there's like an investment involved, I'm more likely to show up. Um, but having an accountability partner, whether that is a coach, whether that's a friend, your partner, have 
somebody there that's going to support you through the tough times because it's not if the tough times are gonna happen, it's when. <laughs> like life just throws curveballs at us and you know, having somebody there to be able to push us and keep us accountable is so important in terms of like staying consistent. And now we're on to our last pillar of the pyramid. So we went through mindset, we went through sleep and stress, we went through food, exercise, and now we're on to supplements. So just as a food pyramid, things that you have at the top are the ones that have the least importance and the same applies to supplements. They have a role to play? Yes. Are they a necessity? No. Can you like achieve remarkable results without ever taking supplements? Yes, you do. I wouldn't even consider looking at supplements before you optimize the other four pillars that I've talked about because that is what's going to give you the bigger bang for your book. But yes, supplements do have a role to play and this is why I'm mentioning it because if you already optimize your diet, you already optimize your training, then you can look at supplements to support that. And as the word suggests, supplements, they are there to supplement your diet. They are not to replace anything. There's better supplements than others when it comes to things like anything labeled to detox, fat loss, fat burning, stay away from them. Save your freaking money, buy pretty gym clothes. They're gonna do fuck all for your progress and your journey. But there are other things like vitamins, things like protein powders, creatines, um, fatty omega fatty acids that do enhance your health but it's going to be individual i'm not going to be like labeling out which ones are the best of bestest supplements because essentially it comes down to you and what you're lacking what you're deficient in what you need to optimize your journey based like on your goal and where you are so choose supplements smartly but they're literally at the top of the pillar they're not that relevant so just to recap summarize the Transform with MG 5-step framework is mindset, sleep and stress, food, exercise and supplements and follow it in that order and this is what's going to help you take control of your health and fitness. By the way, I just want to say a massive thank you for listening, for liking, for subscribing, for leaving reviews. It honestly like means the world to me and you know if you haven't already done that so I would honestly appreciate if you hit the follow button if you're listening on Spotify or hit the subscribe button if you're watching because it just supports the channel 